Hello, welcome to Ephemera Files by Tommy, and today I am sharing a hashtag Tassel Tuesday. This is a collaboration that is hosted by Joanne at Creating with Jovi, and I will link her below. And you can find her on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, all kinds of artsy places. I am going to make a tassel from this and it's not a salt shaker. I did, however, pick up a couple of salt shakers to add to my collection that I'm going to make tassels out of and I am going to use much the same technique. This is a little tchotchke that I got when I was in Holland, Michigan and it says hand painted right there and it is just it is so cute. It is ceramic. It once upon a time looks like it had something glued on the top and I got, oh, well, see a little bit more is coming off. Give me one minute while I see if I can get the rest of this off. Well, it came off. So I either missed it completely when I was cleaning it up after I purchased it or after I got the, the price tag off of it, what, was still stuck on there, dried up enough on its own that it was able to be scratched off and then washed off. I prefer the second one, <laughs> but whichever way it was, it works. It is all clean now though. I didn't miss any spots this time. And I'm gonna tell you, somebody left the door open the other day between my studio and the garage and I have a couple of flies in here. So they may join me on my video today. One thing this has that most salt shaker will not have is this moving part. The, um, what are these called? The blades? I don't think they're called turbines on this kind of a windmill. And it is attached by this wire that has a loop here, goes through the building, and then just splays open on the backside. And I think that there may have been some kind of a decoration on the front at one time, but I don't know that. So I am going to take this off for the first part of creating the tassel, just so I can get it done. And don't forget and struggle later with trying to do things. And so that just pulls out and there's a hole that goes all the way through this. Um, the two sides are different, but I don't think it matters which side really goes on the front, as long as one of the sides ends up on the front. And I am going to keep this part together with the windmill uh, blades. Now I have gathered some yarn so that I can make my tassel because Tassel kind of requires some yarn, doesn't it? And when I was in that same shop, I think these came from the same shop, I got some lace. I don't know. I'll have to go back and look through my videos now because I can't remember. And I got this lace. I know that the laces, anyway, came from the same shop as each other. Oh, nice rusty straight pin. I'm going to have to be careful with that because I can't get tetanus shots. <laughs> I'm allergic to them and I really don't want to have to go get one. Oh my. Okay. So how is that fastened? Is it like, Ooh, I'm nervous about this. I just want to find the other end of the pin. without sticking myself. Oh gosh. Okay. Oh, I think I think that's it right there. All right. So I am just going to try Oh, yes. There it went and I didn't stab myself. Yay! Oh, okay. I don't know about you, but that was a little harrowing for me because I don't want to go to the hospital. All right. So these are two of the laces that I have picked out to go with this tassel, along with 
a couple of different kinds of yarn. This one is a little tangled. I'm sorry, I could get that on camera, couldn't I? Is a little tangled. I took it with me to a youth conference a couple of weeks ago, and a few of us used different parts of it for our costumes because we had theme days. And one of us used it, let's see, for uh, one day was Christmas, and one of my young ladies tied it around her hair that she had piled up on top of her head like um, Cindy Lou Who. And then I used it, oh, what day did I use it on? Um, let's see, our theme days were Christmas, 4th of July, St. Patrick's Day, movie day, and college day. So I think I must have used it. I think I used it on Christmas as well. And I think I had it wrapped around the top of my head like a snow fort. Anyway, I'm not going to use a lot of that because it is going to be a little bit more tricky with the pom-poms on it. But I do want to use some of it just because of the blue and white theme. And then I have this yarn. And this yarn is super fluffy. Very, very, very fluffy. And I love the way it feels. And I think those will all go well together to make the basis of my tassel. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those. And the way I'm going to cut them, I want my tassel to be about eight inches long when it's finished, just the tassel part. This is a 17 inch long uh, ruler on this side. So it's going to be easy enough to line them up and cut them. And I am going to cut, I think, seven of each one and then test it to see how well that folds out. Now, I'm not going to measure each and every one to make sure it is precisely on the 17. Matter of fact, I can't even get seven out of this one because I don't have that much of it. So I'm just going to get what I can out of it. I only got four out of that one, but I got this nice little piece that I can use in a different project. May use it on this one. I don't know. That might be just right for making a bow. We'll find out. This one, like I said, I wasn't going to cut very many. I would like at least three, though. So I am first going to tie a knot in this end because... I don't want it to fray and cause issues. I'm not sure how to tie a knot with that one. I should have cut that halfway instead. Let's see if I can do it like this. Yep, I'll just tie it around that, that pom-pom. That worked. And I will cut this one a little bit better. I did bring over my little tiny, tiny 1.60 millimeter crochet hook. Not to crochet with, but to help with doing things just like that. And then that, oh, from string to string, is about 17.
All right, so there's three. And if I decide that I want another one, I will go ahead and get another one. Now this is going to make up the majority. And so I'm just going to cut these until I feel like my pile is fat enough. I think one more. I don't even know how many I cut, which is unusual because usually I count pretty much everything and I didn't count that. All right. So I think when that's doubled over, that'll be a good size tassel to go with my windmill. This is my We Are Memories tearing ruler. And I will link below to a video that I made uh, some time back about how I use this to make my to make my tassels. I need to get my and this is just this is medical tape that you would get at um, at Dollar Tree. It makes really good washi tapes when you're making your own washi tape. It also, at Dollar Tree, they also have a paper medical tape. And I love that. I use it a lot. All right, so now I have my different types of the laces over here. And I am going to start off with the one that I have the most of. I should separate these so that I'm not pulling them into a big knotted mess. All right, now how I'm gonna start this is I'm gonna take this and I am going to feed it through and I don't know if you can see it, but this moves because of this slot that's in the middle, it moves. And so I can feed my pieces through there. And let's see, if that's seven and a half, then eight and a half is the middle. I actually need to scoot my ruler just a little bit. Maybe it was trying to tell me, move me, move me by trying to move itself. No, come on. It wouldn't really do that. But it did remind me that it wasn't in the right place. I put that through there and then I pull it all the way down. And I have many more of these pieces of yarn than I do anything else. And so I'm going to put two of those down. I'm gonna push them through if I need to. I can use my hook. If I'm gonna use my hook, I probably need to feed them through from the left since I am right-handed. And tassels, you know, you're not gonna trim them all up to be exactly the same length anyway. When you get finished, you're going to give your tassel a bit of a haircut just to shape it when it's done. So I am not worried about them being exactly lined up evenly. Okay, so I said I was going to go this way, although this yarn's probably, this ribbon is probably not going to give me any problems. And we'll push that one down. Do another couple of these. Now, I would normally, if I wasn't trying to make a video, I would have this on something higher so that I wasn't having to lift it up every time. But since I'm making a video, I'm lifting it up every time. I do have a feeling I'm going to have to cut more of these. 
Okay, I need to flip these because it went the other direction. That's easy enough because I just do it like that so that the top is on this side instead of on that side and I take the bottom under so that it's on the same side too. You want all of your pieces on one side to be on the top and on one side to be on the bottom. It doesn't matter if it's left or right. They just need to be all either up or down. And like I said, my first video that I made on this is probably much easier to follow. So I am going to link it below and I'm going to put you on fast forward while I put the rest of my tassel pieces in. All right, I'm going to stop right here and tell you something. You're watching me agonize over, I have two here, then one, and then one, and then one, and then two, and then one, and then one, and then one, and then two, and then one, and one, and then one, and, and, and it's, <laughs> it doesn't have to be all that, folks. I am making myself a little nuts here trying to do that because it's all going to end up together anyway. So, chill out, Tommy and just make your tassel. All right, like I said, <laughs> you don't have to stress over it as much as I have been. Oh, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next step, which is tying it. And I think I'm going to get just a little bit stronger piece of yarn. Now, in my other video, I do this the right way. I forgot to do the string part, the yarn part. And so I'm trying to get it done now. Because the whole technique of using the We Are Memory Keepers ruler for this kind of counts on this yarn working the way it's supposed to, which means you kind of got to do it the way you're supposed to. And 
And right now I've got weight on that. So this is not working at all. So you do your, tie, your tassel however it is that you are used to doing your tassel. And then join me at this next step. Look and see what it is before you leave, though, because I don't want you to go too far on your tassel. Because then you might have a problem with your, uh, your salt and pepper shaker addition. So right now, my tassel's in a hot mess <laughs> because I didn't do the right thing at the right time. So now I am going to be pulling the tassels because some of the legs are much shorter than their opposite leg. And you don't want it to all be short on one side. So go ahead and fuss with it until it's evenly evenly arranged in a manner that pleases you. I think that I am good with this. All right, and this is the point where you want to come back after making your tassel, is after you've made this part of it, okay? So get to this point and join me back here. All right, here we go. Here's the part that makes this a little bit different. This is where we are going to join this to our little figurine. This would be a salt shaker. We would be using the holes on the top. No, if this was a salt shaker, we'd be using the holes on the top. But since it's not a salt shaker, it doesn't have holes on the top. So we'll have to do it just a little bit differently. And I have you may want to get a piece of thread or a piece of wire that is longer than that one or you may want to have your little tiny crochet hook or something because you are going to be putting this yarn I feel like I'm just not doing a very good job at all of this um, because it's not a salt shaker and I'm having to think through everything much more than I would normally. All right, so we're going to stick the yarn up in there and we're going to take, you're going to take the crochet hook or whatever item you have. You're going to give yourself more room to work with it. You're going to put this in as far as you can. You may need to use something to help poke it down further so that it is equal with the holes, whether they are your salt and pepper holes or your holes for your figurine. And you're going to go and you're going to hook that yarn and pull it through yarn or string or whatever you're using. A ribbon might work better because it doesn't unravel on itself quite so much as yarn does, especially this is a, a baby soft yarn, I think is, is that a, This is a yarn that's meant for making friendship bracelets, so it's really soft so that it's not going to be rough on your skin. And it unravels easily because I think that you divide it into plies. And then you're going to repeat that for your second set of holes, your second hole that you're going to be putting string through. Now on this one, 
hold the first one that you went through so that you're not pulling it through like I just tried to do. I've got a hold of both yarns and I tried to pull both of them over to this side. And that's not what you want to happen. After you get both of your holes through, you're gonna pull it down to where it sits right on top of your tassel. And then you're going to tie your knot on the top. Now this is just to hold it in place right now. I think it may stay. Like I said, this is not if you're doing a salt and pepper shaker, it'll stay in place because your holes will be right next to each other and so nobody will see them. This one is different. All right, so I've got that tied on there now. And what I'm going to do next is I am going to make a braided loop for the top. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take some of this yarn and I am going to get as long a piece. This is way, way, way too long, okay? I don't need that much to braid my loop. So I am going to cut some of this off first. That is probably plenty, and that is nine inches. All right, so I'm gonna cut 18 inches of this one, or you can just cut it as long as your two pieces are here. And since they're doubled, and this one's going to be doubled, if you double it over like that, you can measure it much easier. And you're going to need three pieces total. If you're going to use the string or yarn or ribbon that you used through the top, then count that as one of your three pieces. Now these two pieces, you are going to pull them through this part here. If it's on your salt and pepper shaker, you're still going to pull it through the part that is right there, okay, through that underneath of the yarn or whatever it is that you've tied it with, okay? See what I mean? This one has come up this side. I'm going to pull this one through this side. And these all do need to be as even as possible. All right, so you got one, two, three, and one, two, three. And now you're going to braid these. And the way that I suggest braiding them is don't have these two pieces that you've used for your knot on the same braid. Make sure each of those are on a different braid. Now, I can't tell you how to braid. I am not a good teacher on that. I'm sure that you can find somebody who can teach you how to braid. What I need is to tape that so that it quits climbing up on me. Once again, I have an eye hook <laughs> that I can put the end of this over and it doesn't move on me. And it's still moving because this is not fastened to that. You could also macrame if you wanted. Can you macrame with three strands? If not, then you may want to do some figuring on that yourself. Let's see, and I think that that is long enough. 
I grabbed a couple of clothespins because I want that not to come unraveled while I am braiding this side. You don't have to braid this. You could simply make a loop with whatever medium it is that you've put through the holes in the top, okay? I am braiding because I know what I am doing for the next step. And I want it to look similar. All right. And so these two strands I am going to tie an overhand knot at the end of the braids using all of the strands that I have used. And so I'm going to count to make sure I got them all pulled through. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got them all. And with that overhand knot, I think it's also called a lark's head knot, but I'm not positive on that. That should be strong enough to hold my tassel securely over whatever I want to loop it over. Now, for the next step, you could stop here. You could stop here, definitely, if you wanted to. You could just say, that's finished. I really like it. If you wanted to, and I am going to just because I have corners here, and so my tassel doesn't sit down completely on them, Plus, I didn't quite get my knot super tight up there. So I know that it's going to come down some right there. I am going to make another braid to go around the top of the tassel so this sits on it. And I'll be right back when that is done. All right, here is my braid. I didn't have to make it very long because I'm only going around that part. I do want, however, to put a little bit of something extra there just because of the tail end here. And I discovered when I was getting my stuff together for this that I do not have any big white beads. And I only have a few big blue beads, and they're not really big enough for what I wanted because I need something that when this part that was on the hook slides over it, it will hold on to it. And that's a decent sized bead. So I am going to get one of my wooden beads. And even at that, it was slim pickings. And I don't know, because this is too green and I don't have any big, big blue ones. So just looking real quick to make sure I don't have one that would work. And I don't. I have a lot of nice blue beads that not a big one like that. So I am going to be using either this one or this one, or maybe both. I may use both just to make sure. Um, let's see, let's do this and this. I think that's how it went. And I actually need to tie my knot first. So let's see where it needs to be. I am, I am going to wrap the braided cord around the top of the bead, or the tassel, excuse me. It looks like I could actually do it twice with the amount that I have.
I can. Yep, and then that's actually pretty, pretty close to a perfect fit on there. So I am going to go ahead and make my overhand knot. Again, making sure that I have six strands, two, three, four, five, six, before I pull that tight. Okay, now I'm gonna divide this into two separate legs, and I am going to put one of these beads on each of those ends. And I'm gonna have to use my crochet hook again. And I don't know if I can get all three at the same time. I don't think so. So there's one. Getting ready to do the third one. And what I'm doing is I am pulling those two strands tight against the side away from where I am pulling the yarn through whenever I am pushing this through to make sure it doesn't push them back out the other side. Okay, so there is that side and I'll tie another knot. There's that one. And then I'll repeat that with the other bead. There it is. And maybe I could get all three through that one. That one holds that one's hole seems to be a little bigger. Let's see. Yep. That worked. And I'll tie that as well. Granted, I would rather it was one <laughs> one big bead, but I didn't really have that option. So I'm going to cut those off. And now, I don't have my knot in this end yet either. So I need to go ahead and do that. Wish me luck on this one. There we go. And I really only have to do this once, so it's not like that's ever going to have to be undone again. But I'm going to leave that on there just so I've got that hole whenever it comes time to feed those through. Now, I am going to get some glue. And that is the wrong glue. I have a lot of glues. <laughs> and they're all right together. And I am going to... Start on this side here, and I'm going to put it on this face that doesn't have the glaze. This would be the part that's, um, let's see, like on the bottom of this one, this part that would sit on the bottom of the kiln is not glazed. That's the part that feels rougher than the other parts. And I'm going to start it right there with the glue. The glue is going to be on the bottom of the figurine or the salt and pepper shaker, whichever one you are using right now, for the first go round. And I don't know that any one glue is going to be better than the other on this particular project. What I have in that bottle is a three-in-one, which is really good at gluing most things together. At least that's been my experience. But you use whatever your favorite glue is that will hold things that are fabric and or paper and not paper together. Did that make sense? 
because a lot of things are really good if you're gluing paper to paper. A lot of things are really good if you're gluing fabric to fabric. Some things are really good if you're gluing fabric to paper. Not everything is good at gluing fabric and paper to other things like china, porcelain, whatever your particular item is. All right, so I'm going to go over and I'm going to put a spot of glue right there. And then this time around, I am going to put glue on this part of the tassel and put it, or on the braid and put it onto the tassel directly. And in that case, I am gluing fabric to fabric. Because I think that yarn is still considered a fabric, isn't it? I know it's a fiber, anyway. So we're gluing fiber to fiber, how about that? And make sure that your parts back here are still going to meet. And I just almost did not make this long enough for them to meet. All right, because I've got that right there. And now I need to pull these through the loop before I set them in the glue. And I'll know I've got them all the way through when those beads are on the other side of the loop. So there's one bead. And go through other bead. And I'm going to have to go back and do some fussing and finagling. Just to make sure everything is in its proper place. But I think... It went pretty well where I wanted it to go. Yep, there we go. Where did that pink bead come from? I must have dropped it earlier. All right. I'm going to let that glue sit up just a little bit. I'm going to make sure that I don't have stuff glued where I don't want it to be glued. And now, if you wish, you can go through and tie, whoops, you know what, if you wish, you could go ahead and do that, or I could go ahead and finish putting it back together. I almost forgot about this. And I am going to pick out one of my beads that I think will go well with the blue right there. And I am going to put it, let's see, maybe I should make sure it goes with everything. That could be it. What else have I got? Nope, that one doesn't quite do it for me. I think that first one that I pulled out might be the best one. Hmm. I think this one's a little smaller. I think it might work better. Yes. Just slightly smaller, but it's smaller. I think it'll look better. And so I'm going to feed this wire through here. Obviously, if you have a salt and pepper shaker, you won't have this built in. But if you wanted to, you could put beads on your piece that goes through the holes at the top. And I'm going to twist this 
maybe I am going to twist this. <laughs> just to make sure it stays on there. You do not have to have jewelry making pliers to put beads on a piece of wire. You can just thread them on there and use a regular pair of pliers if you need. I've got lint and yarn all over that. So now I'm gonna feed this through here and the reassembly is going to be hopefully easy because I'm just going through a hole on one side to the hole on the other side. And then I'm going to have to pull it and twist it. And I don't think my other wire is long enough to go through, but I think that it'll be okay. And if you wish, you could tie some beads on some of the yarns that are coming through here. So I could add some of the beads that look like that bead up there. But I'm going to have to have, this is too big, so I am going to have to have a smaller one if I do that. Yep, I think for any of those beads, I'm going to have to have a smaller tool to put them on there. So I will probably go and add some of those. And then I will show you pictures at the end of the completed tassel. But I like it. I think it turned out well. You can still see the two beads over here that are holding the the top topper of the tassel on to the bottom of the windmill. And I'm pretty happy with it. This was my first time doing it with something that was not a salt shaker. So I hope that you give me a little bit of grace on that and give it a try yourself. It actually tends to be a pretty, pretty tassel. And I haven't seen very many like this around. Thank you for joining me today. And as always, be kind. Bye.